Hello, good afternoon guys. Once again, this is Brother Alvin, the evangelist from Canada, and good day to all of you. First of all, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, it's Thanksgiving Day on Monday here in Canada, and uh, it's a beautiful Saturday, so people are in long weekend and holiday mode. And I'm especially blessed because my son is here with my grandkid, Takaya, so spending the weekend with us, so God is good. Today, we like to make part two of the video I posted earlier, yesterday, entitled, Why is it difficult for some to get saved? And this is part two. I'd like to start by quoting Matthew 19 verse 24 Jesus said it is much easier for a camel to enter to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God now there's a reason why Jesus used this illustration in Jerusalem uh, there is a narrow gate. Camels go through a narrow gate to enter the city. And because it is so narrow, they have to, the travelers have to remove the luggages, the baggages uh, hanging on the back of a camel. They, they have to unload everything for the camel to be able to go through. So, in the same way, this is a good illustration because Jesus said, uh, a rich man, if he wants to enter the kingdom of God, he must be willing to forsake all his love of money, all the love of riches, all his greed, all his material possessions. In fact, Jesus said, if you're not willing to forsake all that you have, you cannot be my disciple. Okay, that is very clear. So, we can conclude that even Jesus himself said in the Gospels that only few, it is very difficult to enter the kingdom of God. It is very difficult to get saved and only few will find it. Okay, so I know it's hard, but even Jesus himself admitted it. Okay, so in the part one in part one of this uh, series I gave you two reasons why it is difficult to enter the kingdom of God and number one it's because God is sovereign you know we cannot force God uh, with with regards to what he would do we cannot dictate on God we cannot pressure or force God because God has a timetable and he operates based on his sovereign Plan. He has an appointed time. Uh, for example, in evangelism, if there is a crusade in a city, if there is a visitation from, from God, uh, he may choose, he may decide to save 100 out of 5,000. Okay, that's it. Only 500 people will get saved. So remember, in part one, we have established the sovereignty of God. Okay, salvation is the sovereign work of God alone. Okay, if God doesn't do the work first, nobody can come to Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus said, no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by the Father from above. No one can come to me unless the Father first draws him to myself. Okay, John 6, 44, and... John 6 65 so that means without the drawing of God without the granting of God we cannot come so if God grants only 100 souls to get saved today in a small crusade or in an, in an evangelistic gathering in a hall in a village then only 100 people will get saved today okay so in other words we have to trust God to move on his own timing on his own sovereignty because he is an independent God, we cannot dictate on him, we cannot pressure him. The second reason why it is difficult is because human nature, uh, Romans 8, 
teaches us that the human mind, the carnal mind, is an enemy of God. It is not subject to God. It will not submit to God. It will not yield to God it, because it is an enemy of God. In other words, it does not have the natural human ability to become righteous, to obey God or to please God because it, in the first place, its nature is to sin. It loves to sin. It loves to rebel. It hates God. It loves wickedness. It loves to sin. And it will not naturally come to Jesus Christ because his mind, the carnal mind, is an enemy of God. That's human nature. That's depravity, uh, as mentioned in Romans 8, verse 7 and 8. Another verse, 1 Corinthians 2, verse 14, Paul said the natural man does not have the ability to understand the things of God because he is born blind and dead, deceived, separated. Uh, you know, he does not have the ability to understand the gospel. He is living in darkness. Uh, he cannot, when he hears the gospel, he cannot understand it uh, because the gospel can only be understood by divine revelation. When the Holy Spirit opens his mind and heart, his mind and heart, to understand when the Holy Spirit convicts him and illuminates him then he becomes receptive he surrenders to the gospel he believes in the Lord Jesus so for someone to get saved God must be presently actively working okay uh, it must be God's perfect timing it must be the operation of the Holy Spirit convicting and instructing teaching the gospel to him helping him understand the gospel so so that he will surrender to the cross of jesus christ well for me it was 1987 for the first 26 years of my life i could not come to god to jesus christ because it wasn't my time yet but god saved me in the fall sometime in september of 1987 when i surrendered my life to jesus Christ. Amen. So, uh, because of these realities, it is really difficult. You know why? Because we cannot force God. But there is something we can do. You know, if we want the salvation of our loved ones, the only thing we can do is pray and believe in God. Pray and believe in God. Now, it may take 10 years, 20 years, for God to save our family, our loved ones, or they may never be saved at all. God may never knock at the door of their heart. God may never convict them. God may never draw them. The Holy Spirit may keep them in darkness all, all those years. The Holy Spirit may never illuminate them. And there's nothing we can do. I know it is difficult, but that's what the Bible teaches. You know, The Bible teaches depravity of man. The Bible teaches the sovereignty of God in salvation. And we are at the mercy of God. Our salvation, illumination, enlightenment, all depends on the sovereign work of God and the mercy of God. Without it, we are completely desperate and lost. So brothers and sisters, I hope you understand where I'm coming from. I'm a Reformed theologian. Uh, I believe in Reformed theology. I believe the Bible teaches Reformed theology, and um, it doesn't matter whether you are an Arminian or a Calvinist. In the end, not everybody will get saved because Revelation 21, those whose names were not written in the book of life, were cast into the lake of fire. God knew by sovereignty, by foreknowledge from the very beginning, that only few, some will be saved, while the rest of humanity will perish in everlasting lake of fire that is why we have an important mission that is why i obeyed the call of god in early 2022 when god by his spirit uh revealed to me that is it is now my time to become a full-time evangelist and it is now time to evolve into a missions society well it happened naturally because of covid and chaos uh, God made it easier for, for Freedom Fire Full Gospel Church to evolve 
it was much much easier because of the COVID and the chaos everything just happened naturally all things work together for good and it was difficult for me to make that decision but I trusted God because somehow I believe with all my heart that when I obey God if I obey the call to become full-time evangelist and to evolve this organization into a mission society I was willing to do it because number one I believe it is the will of God number two I believe many souls will get saved so it was a difficult decision but I said yes for the sake of the souls of men that will get saved and since the beginning of this year there has been 15,000 views on YouTube and every Sunday online on Facebook uh, there's about you know maybe almost a thousand at least 500 to 700 views to 800 views every Sunday and the gospel has uh, broken out to the world you know the gospel has been released has been you know has broken out to the world uh, online okay um, many multitudes are hearing the gospel every week and I hope God will use this video I believe this is God's instrument uh, he can use this video to convince maybe you are one of the elect out there that God appointed to eternal life Maybe God is drawing you right now. You heard this message. Maybe you realize you are lost and the Spirit granted you revelation of the gospel, convicted you of your sin, and maybe you're, you're one of the elect and right now you're opening your heart, you're believing in the Lord Jesus. Well, this is the gospel command. This is the great commission. Believe in the Lord Jesus. Confess your sin to Him, repent of your sin, and you will be saved. If you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is your personal Lord and Savior, you will be saved. So I'm one happy evangelist because I have been preaching to the world. I can make videos anywhere, uh, once a week, twice a week, videos like this for 12 minutes and preach the gospel to the world here's my final conclusion I know it is difficult for men it is difficult to get saved but with God all things are possible with God all things are possible yes it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God to enter the kingdom of God much easier for a camel to enter the eye of a needle but hey with God all things are possible if you are one of the elect God will save you today you know in the book of Acts God opened the eyes of Lydia and she believed amen God provided a means the way to, to bring to salvation uh, the jailer and his family in Acts chapter 16 and Cornelius and his family in Acts chapter 10 here's what I can say if you are one of the elect if you are one of the chosen ones God will make sure that before the second coming you will get saved he will make a way to reach you to save you to convict you and maybe this video is God's instrument and you're hearing it right now you're one of the appointed ones come enter the kingdom of God believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved God bless you if you like the content of this video please subscribe to my channel Alvin Almeida, The Evangelist. God bless you. Until the next one.